And welcome back to S Squared and from a mess to a shop build. It's kind of a state of the shop Sunday little mini update. Got a, quite a few things done this weekend. It's still an absolute mess in here. Uh, I did break out some of our kind of old tools. As you can see, I've got an old uh, Black & Decker workmate bench over there, a little clamp bench with an MDF top, and then over here, I've got an ancient Delta table saw in a kickstand mount. Um, it's basically an upside down circular saw. Only like seven and a quarter inch blade. Not very powerful, but the stand is really nice. It can do a fairly wide rip cut on it. The fence is nice and straight. So it's nice to have something set up so I can build some more like the workbenches and kind of get up off the ground. I still need to finish up getting my miner saw mounted on some casters and then I can start building stands for things like my planer and spindle sander and my newer 10 inch Hitachi small saw so I can kind of get that up and running in here. I did finally also get some shelving mounted above the garage door so I'm going to kind of continue that on each side over there and then I've also got some cabinets and some few other things hung up above the mini fridge bench. Finally one of the last thing I did this weekend was reconfigure my bike rack. Initially when I built it I was using some scraps that I had. The two by fours that I mounted to the wall were only 36 inches long so I kind of uh, this will work. It doesn't. You need at least 16 inches between bikes uh, as far as like the size of my car. Right? I'm a tall lanky guy so my bikes are a little bigger. My vice bikes are probably fine if they're a little smaller or shorter together. But a minimum of 16 inches between uh, the bike mounts. Um, if you want a really good video of how to make one of these, check out the Crafted Wood Workshop. I will put a link down there. Uh, to his videos. He's got a really nice um, full detailed how to actually build a nice bike rack. Mine is screw some 2 by 4s to the studs and throw some hooks in the wall and get the bikes off the floor and out of my way. In other news, I'm going to be working on a really cool project for myself. A Something I have never done before but I've wanted to for a very long time and kind of get back to some of the stuff I used to do kind of growing up. I am going to be building an ashes built plan, uh, 13 foot kind of all water cedar strip or cypress strip kayak. Uh, a lot of people kind of looked at around, there's a lot of kind of people building canoes and boats and I want one. I don't really like the a lot of the plastic ones that are kind of in my price range. Granted, I'll probably spend more money building this than I can buy um, one of these less expensive plastic ones, but I'm not just a big fan of the sit-on-top style kayaks. Uh, I grew up with sit-in styles kind of up in the Adirondack Mountains of New York State. My family has a three-season basically old hunt camp right on water. Really nice. Down here, we've got a lot of kind of mixed water. We've got a lot of black water swamps and some bigger open water. So I think this boat will be perfect for that. I'm going to have links to uh, Trevor's from Ashes Built Plans in the description. He's been awesome to work with. It's definitely going to be a big challenge for me to actually build this boat because I have never built anything like this before. But I think it's going to be a fun challenge for me. One of the other things that's going to be happening soon is uh, S Squared Design Works is, uh, you know, this is kind of a personal show, what's the shop state, but it is a LLC in the state of South Carolina. So I am a, it is a small business. And I've been working with some really good friends that are going to be doing a coffee shop in Florence. And so hopefully as they start getting some of their stuff more in place to get their building built and things set up, we are going to be doing some cool pieces for them. I mean, we're not going to be doing the, the heavy construction side of it. We're going to be doing uh, 
display racks, menu boards, kind of some of the cool, funky, like fit out and like trim work. So I can't wait to share that with you. Hopefully that kind of starts picking up here towards the end of the year, beginning of next year, kind of get them up. Um, one of the another thing I did is I don't you probably can't see this on this video, but I did a super low budget little DIY upgrade for the lights in here. I just went to Home Depot and got these little splitters that kind of split the lights from one light to two light and threw a couple uh, 75 watt equivalent LEDs in there. Definitely not my long term lighting solution for here, but it's the, I don't really have a whole lot of money to spend. I had the LEDs. I just picked up these really cheap, get them in the shop so I can actually see a little bit. It's still relatively dark in here, especially um, with the garage door closes. There's no light on that half of the garage. So it's definitely something I'm going to need to work on. Uh, if you guys have any recommendations that you guys like for kind of less expensive lighting, I'm not going, I'm not planning on going all out here and filling the shop with like 50 LEDs strips. But if there's something that you guys like, please comment. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, let me know what you think about what's going on in this channel. What I'm going to be doing. I'd love to hear more from you guys. And if you want to stay up to date, make sure you hit that little bell icon so you get notified when I post new videos. Again, this is Drew from S Squared. Thanks and have a great rest of your weekend.